Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking with the lead immigration attorney with the Legal Aid Society of Middle Tennessee, Chai Singh Kumini. Uh, she is joining us via Zoom. And, and we just talked about uh, marriage from another country. You, you see that as far as immigration law. Uh, one is a U.S. citizen, one is not, and an abuse that may uh, unfold in that relationship and, and what can arise there. I want to also talk about human trafficking. What are you seeing as far as human trafficking in, in the line of, in, in the work that you do? Uh, for the most part, it's um, commercial sex. Uh, individuals who have been uh, induced, coerced into coming into the U.S. and um, forced to perform uh, commercial sex acts. Um, it could in involve uh, labor trafficking as well. Um, family members who bring over their relatives and then take away their immigration paperwork, their passports, and force them to work to pay off their debt of bringing them over, whether it's, you know, to pay for the immigration process and the debt never gets paid. Um, but for the most part, I see mostly sex trafficking. Uh, and it, it varies. I've got, um, I had a case where my client's family member was killed in her home country. She received a phone call that said, you know, get on the bus and come to the U.S. And um, she makes her way here. And then she is essentially a sex slave for this individual and um, is trapped in that really, well, it's not even a relationship in that situation until um, she is able to escape somehow. Another one is uh, got a few newer cases where it involves just, uh, you know, they they come in um, with a group of people and when they reach the border, it becomes a trafficking situation in that the people who help them come over now is extorting the family members for money in order to release this individual from custody. And I have a client who actually called ICE to come rescue her um, because she was uh, repeatedly brutalized while she was um, under, um, while she was with the smugglers. Wow, and all right, how common is that in Tennessee? Uh, is it more common in Tennessee than other states, less common? What, how do you think we rank? I'd say not as common as the border states because that's where you're going to um, see people traveling and then uh, could be, you know, they, they've paid individuals to help bring them over um, across the border, but then that smuggling situation turns into a trafficking situation because now they're being extorted um, to be able to get out of the situation. Um, and oftentimes they are trapped with my particular client, she was uh, locked up in a in someone's house, and she, luckily she was able to get a hold of the phone and call for rescue. Uh, in Tennessee, it, it is fairly common um, in that you know happens a lot in rural areas, um, not necessarily Nashville. You know, Nashville's got a lot of interstates that run through it, and with with cities that have um, interstates, you know, truckers passing by, um, it's ripe for trafficking. I've seen a lot of cases come out of Columbia, uh, Spring Hill, uh, the rural areas. And if uh, you did a profile of the houses where trafficking is happening, they look like regular normal houses. Um, and are they often immigrants? Is that the situation? It, it's not. I see immigrants because that's the work that I do. But for the most part, human trafficking involves domestic, uh, uh, domestic um, individuals, U.S. citizens, and often they are um, children. Uh, you know, runaways that are given protection by pimps, and um, and then they get trapped into these situations and are not able to get out. Do the men that are frequenting this, do they know the situation? I mean, do they know this, this 
uh, girl is, is a victim of, of trafficking. I mean, do they understand what's going on here, do you think? I think they, one of those where you go know and you just kind of don't think about it, maybe. You know, they're already doing something that's not legal. So if I don't know, then it's not as bad. You know, this person is being protected by the pimp or they may never meet the pimp. So they just assume that that person is not in a bad situation. And what laws would you like to see uh, changed or adjusted or updated or improved? What, what are some things that, that could help the situation, in your opinion? I think less criminalization of the victims themselves. You know, for, for a while there, uh, human trafficking victims were charged with prostitution. And um, oftentimes, you know, the ones that got arrested were the victims, uh, whereas the Johns, um, don't necessarily get the penalties. And so I'd like for that. And it's been happening in Tennessee. Um, there's a lot of work surrounding human trafficking in Tennessee. We have, um, you know, the TBA or the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation with its own unit and the district attorney's office in Nashville has their trafficking units. So there's a lot that um, is happening around that arena, but there's of course a lot, still a lot of work to do, be done. And all right, are you lead attorney, lead immigration attorney with Legal Aid Society? How do you get involved, and what what do you do? Like, at what point do you get involved in a case like this, and what exactly are you doing? So, my clients often get referred to me um, from the Family Safety Center or. Uh, shelters or other clients and usually you know tra i don't have a whole lot of trafficking cases uh, relative to other types of cases because trafficking victims don't really self-identify and the ones that i do get are uh, referrals from the fbi so we have a good relationship with the um the victim witness uh, portion of the FBI and so if I find somebody who may have been in a trafficking situation you know, I'll ask them can I reach out to the FBI and make a referral and see if they can investigate this further and the relationship kind of uh, is reciprocal in that they also call us um, to provide the immigration services or you know clients or uh, victims that they've come across. All right, very good. So we are talking with the lead immigration attorney with the Legal Aid Society. We've talked about uh, marriages from another country and how that can lead to abusive situations, human trafficking. Another situation you mentioned, children in unsafe situations, um, and they, I guess, wind up going into DCS custody. What, what are we talking about there? What, what's the situation with that? Yeah, so children who are in DCS custody, uh, specifically immigrant children, um, they are under this jurisdiction of juvenile court. So there is a special um, humanitarian form of relief that is available to them. It's called special immigrant juvenile status. And it's for those who are um, essentially under 21, unmarried, in the jurisdiction of D DCS for um, Tennessee. And uh, they've been deemed abused, abandoned, or neglected by one or both parents. And they, you know, the court has determined that it's not in the child's best interest to be reunited with the parents, or it's not viable to reunite the um, children with the parents. And then it's not in the best interest of the child to return them to their home country. So these are children whose parents are immigrants, is that right? That is correct. Have they immigrated here? Um, legally do they have documentation or these often it's that's not the case uh it varies um you know a child can be put into dcs custody for a variety of reasons the majority of my cases are going to be uh kids who have come without documentation um, and their parents have come without documentation so uh, oftentimes uh, they either come with one parent or they come with uh, on their own. 
And of the three we've talked about, marriage from another country, human trafficking, children in unsafe situations, is this the biggest group that you deal with, would you say, or what, what would you say? It is not. Um, so all my cases have been referred um, from DCS, specifically the Murfreesboro office in DCS. I think they discovered that we exist and we do that type of work. And so, um, it's really uh, just a handful of cases right now, but I'm sure as new time goes by, more people learn about uh, the services that are available and the benefit that uh, can be gotten for um, these kids that will, will get an increase in referrals. But the large portion of my cases are going to be the other uh, marriage ones or uh, uh, victims of domestic violence, really. So one thing I didn't talk about was the U visa. So U visas are available for victims of certain crimes, uh, domestic violence being one of them, sexual assault is another. There's about 32 crimes. If they report the crime and cooperate with law enforcement, um, they can be eligible for a U visa. So a good portion of my cases are U visas. Unfortunately, U visas are very long in on the wait list it's right now a minimum of five years um, from the time of filing to get immigration to even look at the case um, there are 10,000 visas available per year there are 200,000 new visa cases that are pending right now but you do the math yeah <laughs> it's a very long wait that's crazy and all yeah. right these children in unsafe positions, so that's that's mainly coming from one office and, and is not the biggest part. But to elaborate on that, all right, I guess what we're seeing at the border, and, and we immigration is in the news all the time, and it's not in the best light often. It's in a very difficult light. This is a difficult topic. And how is that impacted? How, how do the problems that are in the news uh, around the border impact us in Tennessee and the work that you do? So, uh, it, it does impact in terms of, you know, once they get to the border, they'll oftentimes make their way. Um, so with unaccompanied kids, they get put in detention and then they may be sent to a family member in another state. So we do have um, kids who have crossed the border who end up in Tennessee. And the unfortunate thing is that, you know, they don't have access to um, much of many of the services that are available to U.S. citizen kids who are in foster care. Um, there's, uh, they're not eligible for taking care per se. So whereas, you know, other kids who are um, in DCS custody, they may have access to, to take care and the health care. Um, the other thing is, you know, immigration, because it's so much in the news, there's a lot of myths and um, uh, misinformation and uh, just lots of different things out there. And so having to navigate that uh, to let, you know, potential clients or to let people know that there's this relief that is available um you know you are eligible for it or here's a resource for you that that becomes um uh oftentimes a full-time job to, i bet it to i bet it does so that. i want to i want to talk about some of those myths and some of the problems that all of that coverage might uh, create. But we have to take a break. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, if you want to call in, there's a number 615-737 plus 615-737-7587. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.